Hi, I'm Jim Ward of the Middle Country Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 29 in our History Bites series. Today, we will discuss the thrilling home run chase 60 years ago in 1961 between Yankees Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle and their quest to beat Babe Ruth's single season record of 60 home runs. The Yankees of 1961 were coming off a World Series loss to the Pittsburgh Pirates the previous year after Bill Mazeroski's Game 7 series-winning home run defeated the Yankees. That year, Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle hit 39 and 40 home runs respectively. Maris hit two World Series home runs that year, won the Gold Glove Award for Outstanding Fielding, and was named the American League's Most Valuable Player. But it would be the, for the following year that he would be most remembered. In 1961, Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle, known as the M&M Boys, engaged in a season-long home run duel. M Mantle set the early pace. Maris had only one home run in April. Mantle had seven in the first nine games. Maris didn't connect until the 10th game, but caught Mantle on June 3rd when he hit number 14. Five weeks later, they were tied again at 35. Mantle regained the lead 37-36 on July 21st, but Maris surged ahead with four home runs and a July 25th doubleheader against the White Sox, connecting in Yankee Stadium against Frank Bowman, Don Larson, Russ Kemmerer, and Warren Hacker. Mantle caught up again at 40 and led for the last time at 45 to, 30, to 43. To accommodate two new expansion teams in 1961, Major League Baseball's schedule expanded from 154 games to 162. Baseball Commissioner Ford Frick took action to discredit Maris's pursuit of the record, proclaiming in mid-August that Maris would go into the record book with a, quote, a, a distinguishing mark, the now infamous asterisk, unless he broke it in the same number of games that Ruth played when he hit 60 in 1927 which was 154 games. There was no mention that when Ruth set his first home run record, 29 in 1919, he was crowned without a hassle. Ruth's mark was considered legitimate, though he had played the, in the framework of a 154 game schedule. Ned Williamson, a third baseman with the Cubs, had the old record of 27 set in a 112 game season in 1884. Maris had the misfortune of chasing Ruth and being measured against Mantle, a longtime favorite who was in his 11th season with the Yankees. Most fans and the Yankees teammates were rooting for Mantle. If anyone deserved to break Ruth's record, they insisted, it was Mantle. Maris was viewed as an interloper because he had joined the Yankees the year before in a trade with Kansas City. Maris finished August with 51 home runs, the first player with 50 or more going into September. Mantle hung in, only three back at 56-53 on September 9th. He had only, only one homer thereafter and went out of the starting lineup on September 24th with a severe hip injury that required surgery. That left Maris to break Babe Ruth's record. The Astros series took place at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Frick had proclaimed that Ruth's 154-game record would stand if Maris did not break it by the 154th game, which was the third game of a four-game series against the Orioles. Maris hit his 59th homer in game number 153 and almost tied the record with a shot that hooked 10 feet foul in the late innings of the 154th game. On the last day of the season, October 1st, 1961, Roger Maris finally hit his 61st home run. Following the historic shot, Maris jogged around the bases with his head down and initially didn't acknowledge the appreciation of the fans. He had to be pushed out of the dugout by a pair of teammates to tip his cap to the crowd, but said after the game that the home run was the greatest thrill of his life. Quote, It gives me a pretty good feeling to know I'm the only man in the history of baseball to hit 61 home runs. Sal Durante, a 19-year-old Brooklyn truck driver, caught the ball about 10 rows back in the right field stands. After catching the ball, Durante was brought to Maris to give him the ball. Maris thanked him, and Durante thought that would be the end of it. But 
After signing the ball and dating it, Maris handed it back to Durante and said, Keep it, kid. Put it up for auction. Somebody will pay you a lot of money for the ball. He'll keep it for a couple of days and then give it to me. Durante, who expected nothing more than a thank you for Maris, wound up selling the ball to Sam Gordon, a California restaurant owner, for $5,000, which was a lot of money in those days. Gordon then turned the ball over to Maris. In 1998, another home run chase mesmerized baseball fans. Throughout that summer, Mark McGuire of the St. Louis Cardinals and Sammy Sosa of the Chicago Cubs battled each other for the record. Both broke Maris's record, McGuire finishing with 70 home runs and Sosa with 66. In 2001, Barry Bonds hit 73 home runs, surpassing both Sosa and McGuire, and currently holds the single season record for home runs. While there was never an official asterisk next to any record of Maris's, in fact, the league didn't even have its own record book until 1995, and of course Frick had no real say over what anybody else would put in their record books, the league simply considered Ruth's and Maris's to be two separate accomplishments. In 1991, a Major League Baseball Committee on Historical Accuracy voted to remove the distinction and award the record fully to Maris, who had passed away six years earlier, never knowing the record was his. I'd like to thank you all for joining us for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, click like. And if you watched on YouTube, hit subscribe. Thanks so much, and we'll see you all next time.